Hey, this is James, the founder of Sweetfish Media. If you've listened to B2B Growth for a while, you probably have an idea of what we're passionate about. Loving people really well, a constant pursuit of learning, and inspiring people to own their careers. With all the craziness happening with this virus, we are incredibly fortunate to be in the business of podcasting. So many B2B brands are looking for alternatives to their in-person events that are being canceled, and our business is growing as a result. Please don't mishear me on this because I'm not saying this to brag. It is heartbreaking, the economic impact this is having on so many businesses. But being in the business of podcasting, the demand for what we do has increased. And because of that, we're looking to hire really talented people to help us serve that demand. So if you like what we're all about at Sweetfish and you're looking for a great career opportunity, hit us up. There's a link in the show notes where you can apply today. I'm really looking forward to meeting you. Hey there, everybody. Drew McClellan here from Agency Management Institute. Uh, Very grateful to be back uh, with the B2B growth folks on their agency track. So thank you to everyone at B2B Growth for inviting me to continue to contribute content there. If you are not familiar with me or Agency Management Institute, we are an organization that helps small to mid-sized independently owned agencies all over the globe uh, run the business of their business better. Most agency owners are brilliant at the client-facing stuff, but many of us, uh, myself included 25 years ago when I started my agency, many of us are accidental business owners. So We either got uh, let go, we left a job, we decided to hang up a shingle as a freelancer. The next thing we knew, we were running an agency and uh, we didn't go to school for that. We didn't uh, learn how to run a business and things like financial metrics and P&Ls and how to look at the numbers and know if you can afford to hire a new person. All of those things uh, don't come as naturally to us. And so that's what AMI is there to do is to teach and coach Uh, and help and serve agencies so that they can build a business, their agency, that is scalable, that is sustainable, and if they want to down the road, that it is sellable. So that's what we're all about. But today, what I want to talk to you about is what is on everyone's mind right now, and that is COVID-19. So I'm recording this on uh, March 30th. So we are about two weeks or more in to uh, sheltering in place or at least social distancing. And most of us are working from home. And I'll tell you, I've been talking to agency owners pretty much from 7 a.m. to midnight every night for the last couple of weeks, uh, seven days a week. And the stories I hear from them are very different. So I have some agencies that we work with that literally are busier than they were prior to the virus. The, the client mix they have, the type of work they do is in demand and um, they are swamped. On the other end of that spectrum, I have agencies that have literally watched in the last two weeks, 50% of their adjusted gross income walk out the door. And then there's everybody else somewhere in the middle. And and, um, that's, I guess, a reminder to us that this is not a one-size-fits-all crisis and that everyone needs to be smart about how they approach this crisis based on how it's impacting their agency. But what I want to talk to you about today is your number one focus and goal. I want you to think of yourself as a captain of a ship and you are in charge of your vessel, which is the agency. And your job right now, your ship is being pummeled in a storm. It is a rough water, lightning, thunder, tossing and turning storm. And, and, and for some of you, it's the worst storm that your ship has ever endured. For others, if you've been around for a while, uh, maybe this isn't as bad as 9-11 or the recession of 07, 08. You've certainly suffered other storms, biggest client walking out the door. But our job as agency owners and leaders is to get the ship to calm waters. And so that is not only surviving the storm, but also making sure that we have enough gas or fuel and anything else we need, provisions, to actually survive the storm and then navigate our way to calm waters. That's your number one job. And to do that, you need to remain calm, you need to be confident, and you need to be compassionate. And all three of those, I think, are being sorely tested 
for most of us right now, it's pretty difficult to be calm in this chaos of unknowns. And it is awfully difficult to be confident when you, every time the phone rings or your email pings, you twitch because you're afraid it might be a client pulling the plug on a project. I get it. But we have got to dig down deep and we have got to find a way to have confidence in the fact that we will weather this storm. We absolutely will. Your, your ship is built to weather this storm. Now, that doesn't mean it's not going to take damage. It doesn't mean it's going to look exactly the same or as pristine as it did as you entered the storm. It may look a little banged up by the time you get to the calm waters. For some of you, it may mean that you don't have as many crew anymore, uh, that to survive the storm, you actually had to lose some of your crew. So I'm, I'm not saying this is easy. I'm not saying that this is a given without effort and sacrifice, because I think we're going to have to do both. We're going to have to make some sacrifices. And obviously, it's taking a huge amount of effort. Many of you aren't sleeping well right now. You're struggling with what to do next. And um, your job is to get to those calm waters. And the compassionate part, it's your people are afraid as well. And so for you to be sensitive to what's going on in their life, that they're worried about their elderly parents, or they're trying to homeschool while they're still trying to work. You know, this is, this is challenging for everybody. And, and I think sometimes when you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders, as I know many of you do, compassion can also be in short supply. But how we show up in this, how we show up as a leader is going to be so critical to how we look when we do get to those calm waters. The more you can guide and lead and support your team, the more you can guide and lead and support your clients, even if they've pulled the plug on a project, that you would still be reaching out to them, that you would be supporting them, being a good listener. Because right now, I think a lot of people just need to vent or think out loud. All of those things will influence how quickly you get to the calm waters and what it looks like when you get there. But you absolutely need to be managing by the numbers right now. So uh, if you are familiar with AMI's metrics, you know that all we care about is adjusted gross income. So for those of you that are not familiar, let me remind you, uh, you have your gross billings, that's everything you bill a client, minus all of your cost of goods, which include any 1099 contract labor. And what's left is your adjusted gross income. And that's the money that you get to keep to spend on running your business. And that AGI gets broken up into three buckets. 55% of your adjusted gross income should be spent on loaded payroll. So that's salary and benefits. About 25% should be spent on overhead. And ideally, in non-COVID-19 times, 20% of it should be profit. Now, I will tell you right now that for many of you who have had clients hit the pause button, you're not going to hit 20% profit in this season. But what I want to make sure you don't do is go into the red. Because again, remember, you've got to get to those calm waters with the provisions that will allow you to start back up. Clients are going to be anxious. They're going to be just hungry to make up what they've lost during these few months. And you have to be ready to help them. And you can't do that if you're limping along with no supplies and the boat is barely uh, you know, breaking the water because you're so heavy with debt. So. I want you to manage to the numbers, 55, 25, 20. And if the 20 is only five, that's fine. But it can't be negative five. It can't be negative one. You've got to stay in the black. A lot of you have already gone through and slashed any unnecessary expenses. That's a great plan. Many of you are uh, working with clients on payment plans and things like that. Also a great plan. But you've got to keep watching the numbers. This is not the time to stop looking at your financials on a regular basis. 
Hey everybody, Logan with Sweetfish here. You probably already know that we think you should start a podcast if you haven't already. But what if you have and you're asking these kinds of questions? How much has our podcast impacted revenue this year? How's our sales team actually leveraging the podcast content? If you can't answer these questions, you're actually not alone. This is why Casted created the very first content marketing platform made specifically for B2B podcasting. Now you can more easily search and share your audio content while getting greater visibility into the impact of your podcast. The marketing teams at Drift, Terminus, and here at Sweetfish have started using Casted to get more value out of our podcasts, and you probably can too. You can check out the product in action at casted.us slash growth. That's C-A-S-T-E-D dot U-S slash growth. All right, let's get back to the show. The other thing I want you to think about is biz dev. I know it sounds crazy that you should still be planting seeds right now because no one's in the mood to buy. Although I will tell you, I have agencies that have landed new clients in the midst of all of this. In some cases, it was work that they already were pursuing and they were pretty far down the, the lane with this prospect. But in other cases, they literally picked up the phone or answered an email and a brand new client walked in the door. So how we sell right now is going to be different. This is not hard sell time. This is not cold calling time. This is going back and nurturing existing clients, former clients, and prospects that you already have a relationship with. And you are going to show up to help them, not to sell them anything. When they are ready to buy, when they are in a position to spend money, because some of them right now are on lockdown in terms of their budget, just like many agencies have locked that down. But you want to be there to be helpful to them. And you want to keep planting seeds, thoughtful, sensitive, not selling, not pushing, just you being helpful and coaching your clients and prospects through this weird, weird time that we're in. They don't know how to respond to this either. They don't know what to do with their social media. They don't know how to change their digital ads. They don't know what stories they should be pitching to the media. You can be amazingly helpful to them in all of that. And if it's just a quick phone call and you're just spitballing ideas, don't send them a bill. Send them a note letting them know that you enjoyed the conversation and that you hope their family is well and you look forward to sitting down over a cup of coffee or a drink when everybody can physically be in the same space again. Be, be good people. Be caring people in your community. Uh, take an active role in serving your community. One of the agencies we work with in Bangor, Maine, pulled together a list of all of the places that senior citizens and people with compromised immune systems could shop uh, when they had sort of special shopping hours uh, in all of the stores in Bangor. And they published a guide and they released it for free. And they're getting a lot of great press from that, which is not why they did it. They did it because they're good people. But there's nothing wrong with also getting good press or getting noticed for being a good person because that will pay out for you later. So my message for you in this episode is really you've got to be thinking about how you survive this and you have to survive it strong. So if you have to make cuts, if you have to fight for a rent reduction, whatever it may be, now is the time to do it. Don't delay this. Do it right now. Get it done as quickly as possible. Uh, and we are putting out all kinds of content. We've got a document that talks about how to talk to your landlord about getting a rent reduction. We have documents on the CARE Act and all of the different uh, relief loans that are available to small businesses like agencies. We have a ton of resources on our website. No email required. We're not going to try and sell you anything. We're just trying to help agencies get through this. So if you head over to agencymanagementinstitute.com slash COVID, you will find resources organized by week. So the most recent resources are at the top of the page, and then you can work your way down. But we have podcasts, we have videos, we have documents from the federal government, we have documents from the uh, U.S. Chamber for Small Businesses. We've got all kinds of resources there that we would love for them to be helpful to you and for you to take full advantage of them. 
I'm going to be back soon with other ideas for how you can survive this. But for now, just know that you are not doing this alone. Please feel free to come talk to us at the AMI Facebook page or anywhere else that you can find us. I'm available on LinkedIn and other places. Don't do this alone. If you belong to another peer group other than AMI, reach out to those people. Connect with those people. If nothing else, commiserate with those people. Remember, this is this is a long haul for us. We're, we're not out of the woods yet. And we've got several more weeks probably of working from home and managing all of this. So take care of yourself, take care of the agency so that you can get to those calm waters and you can come out of the storm strong and ready to go and ready to make up the revenue you've lost and help your clients do the same. All right, I'll be back soon with more ideas of how you can survive the crisis. Again, thanks to our friends at B2B Growth, and I will be back soon. Thanks for listening. I hate it when podcasts incessantly ask their listeners for reviews, but I get why they do it, because reviews are enormously helpful when you're trying to grow a podcast audience. So here's what we decided to do. If you leave a review for B2B Growth and Apple Podcasts and email me a screenshot of the review to james at sweetfishmedia.com, I'll send you a signed copy of my new book, Content-Based Networking, How to Instantly Connect with Anyone You Want to Know. We get a review, you get a free book. We both win.